Hello, it's Fran again. We're moving on to lab 19, and in this lab we're going to do the standardization of a solution. There are two parts to it. Number one, we're going to prepare primary citric acid standard, and number two, we're going to do a titration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Um, if you remember, we diluted the sodium hydroxide to a 0.1 mole solution um, rather than the original 0.2. So if you have a 0.2 molar solution, make sure you dilute that, go back to the previous lab and you can have that done. We have our distilled water over here and let's run through the supplies that we need for this lab. We've got the pH meter and the buffer solution. We've got our ring stand, some glassware, um, a 500 and a 250. I'm not sure if you have the 250 um, beaker in your labs, but you can do it with just the 500. We have our kit for the standardization of solution lab. And in this, we have a weigh boat. We have our molecular sieves. We have the anhydrous citric acid and filter paper. Got our graduated cylinder, a couple more beakers, some pipettes, Sharpie, and a filter. We're also going to use the syringe and stopcock, and we have our scale for measuring out. Now you also have this parafilm so to kick things off, we're going to set the oven to 110 degrees C, which is 230 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll do that, um, let it get up to temperature. So that's preparing. Um, don't forget to use your safety glasses. And we're going to take the 250 mil beaker. We're going to get the mass of that. So weighing scales on, make sure it's in grams. Beaker on. Take the measure, okay, and to this we're going to add two grams of the anhydrous citric acid. Just straight in there, we're just adding two grams to the existing mass. Oh, perfectly measured out. Don't rely on yours being perfect, make sure you measure it. Okay, so now we have the mass of the beaker and the anhydrous citric acid. Record that on the table. And you're going to put this on a baking tray. Here's a baking tray here. We put that on the baking tray and we stick it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Okay, next up, we're going to make our desiccator. Um, to do that, we're going to take the 500 mil beaker. We need the weigh boat, and we need the molecular sieves. We also need the filter paper. Okay, so turn on the scale. Weigh boat on the scale. Zero it out. And we're adding 10 grams. Yes, 10 grams of molecular sieves. Okay, so we're going to take this. The molecular sieves go in. Make sure they just cover the, the whole bottom of the 500 mil beaker. We're going to take the filter paper. And from the diagram, you see that the filter paper goes in and it looks really nice, but reality is that's not going to happen. So I'm going to just get a scissor, we'll cut it slightly, and then it'll fit much better. Pop that in there, on the bottom. So now it's been 15 minutes um, that our acid has been in the oven. We're going to take it out, make sure you have an oven glove or a mitt or something that you're not going to burn yourself take the baking tray out of the oven and uh, we will put it here 
Then we're going to transfer it into the beaker, put the power film on top, and we should be good to go. Okay, baking tray is here. I'm just going to take this and drop it in. Our film. Okay. stretching the power film evenly. Don't stretch one area too much. Okay, stretching that out. It's got a good seal on there. And it is hot. So you'll see we've got a full seal on the power film. So let that cool completely. It'll take about 10 minutes um, to cool down. Now, while this is cooling, we can move on to the next step. I'll just take this out of the way. Okay, we'll push this over here. We want that to cool down as much as possible. Um, let's take a graduated cylinder, our distilled water. We want 75 milliliters of distilled water so that we're going to make our citric acid solution. Got our 75 mil mark here. Okay, 75 mils, good to go. We're still waiting for this to cool. So now this has been here for about 15 minutes. Um, it's, it's cool to the touch. So take the power film off. Just do a little temp test and see. There's still a little bit of heat in it. Let's leave it, seal it back up again. Leave it for another five, 10 minutes. All right, so that's been about five minutes. And we're good. Okay, so we're going to peel this off. We want to take our scale. Let's just take the mass, and we're looking for the mass to be within um, 0.5 of a gram of what we had taken originally. And this is good, right? So if it's not, if it's not within 0.5 of a gram, Pop it back in there for another five, 10 minutes and let it cool down even more. So now we have our 75 milliliters of distilled water that we're going to add, add to our anhydrous citric acid to create our citric acid solution. Okay, now that's completely dissolved. Move our scales away. Um, we're going to take our ring stand We've got the syringe in here with the stopcock. Make sure the stopcock is closed. Just get it so that you can see your markings. You want to be able to see the 30 mil mark. This is where we're going to go um, with our citric acid solution to that 30 mil mark or close enough. We're also going to take the NaOH, the um, sodium hydroxide, um, one molar solution and I'm going to take one of the smaller, the 100 mil beakers, and into this beaker, I'm going to pipette 10 milliliters of this sodium hydroxide. That was just a previous label. So we have a clean pipette, we have the sodium hydroxide, the 100 mil beaker. Open this, cap up, 10 milliliters. Again, using the gradation on the pet. There's two. Ten. 
Okay. Put it back on. Is there an AOH? 0 0.1 more. Okay. Now that this is dissolved, you're going to put a label on this. Um, you're going to take a photograph of that label and send it in as part of your lab work. On the label, you're going to have the molarity. Um, you will have already calculated the number of moles of anhydrous citric acid. Use the volume of the, the, the solution to calculate the molarity of the solution. Um, label that very clearly and send it in with the rest of your lab work. Okay, we're going to pour this in here, but before we do that, I'm going to just take another waste beaker. Make sure there's enough room to get the beaker in and out here. So we're going to pour this in here. Just in case there's any risk of spilling it, I'm going to pour a little bit in. You know the stopcock is closed, but just pour a tiny little bit in first, just to make sure. We're going to fill this up to about that 30 mil line. Okay, I've gone over the 30 mil line, so I'm going to use the waste container, step it back down to that, remove this. Okay, so I'm going to step it back. Letting it drain down, and there we go, 30 mils. Removing the waste beaker, I'm going to put our sodium hydroxide solution under there. Okay. I like to move it again to the outside, not so it's running down the side, but just so it goes straight in. Now we're going to take our pH meter in the buffer solution, and we're going to stick it in to our sodium hydroxide solution. Got a level. I'm going to record that. And we're going to add 0 0.5 increments, 0 0.5 milliliter increments um, of our citric acid solution into the sodium hydroxide. Nice and slowly. So it's about three drops. Um, to go in between each one, give it a little, not a stir, but just a little swirl. Check your pH again. And you keep doing this process at 0.5 milliliter intervals. Do that until you get to around a pH of 6. Now there is a temptation to make bigger intervals, um, just to speed things up and get them along, but that titration curve kicks in um, when you least expect it, so if you do, the, do those jumps, make sure you know what you're doing and where that titration curve is going to go. I'd encourage you at the moment to stick to the 0.5 milliliter increments. Once you get to a pH of 6, then bring that down to a 0.2 milliliters are much smaller increments so that you can get whatever curve happens um, to be in your data. Always checking the pH between each of their, those, stirring them. Okay. I would say go all the way down um, until you're between 5 and 10 milliliters left in the syringe. I 
Okay, there we have it. Once you're done, make sure you take a photograph of your setup. It should be quite similar to this. Um, chart all of the data that you have so you get um, the plot line um, and submit that with the photographs of everything that you've done with the post lab questions and calculations and uh, we'll see you next time.